Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. <clears throat> In this video, we're going to look at absolute value equations. So before we do that, we probably should step back a bit and ask ourselves, what do we mean by absolute value? This is an idea I'm sure you've heard in another class, but let's make sure that we know for certain. The absolute value of a real number A, which is denoted by this little symbol, the number A between two vertical bars, is simply the distance between A and zero on the number line. So for example, if I'm looking at the absolute value of four, what I want to do is I want to imagine a number line, and the number line needs to at least include zero and four, so I can take a good look at what we're talking about. The absolute value of four is the distance or number of units on the number line between zero and four. How many units is it between zero and four on the number line? We can count, count the spaces. It's one, two, three, four. So the absolute value of four is four. Hmm, that may seem like it doesn't really give us a whole lot of stuff. Let's look at one more. Absolute value of negative three. So again, it's the distance on the number line between negative three and zero. So we'll need to draw a number line to include at least those values. Let's go like this maybe, go a little farther. And I'm looking for the distance on the number line between negative three and zero. How many units is that? And it is one, two, three. So the absolute value of negative three is three. So if you think about it, what absolute value does is it takes away the issue of whether a positive number or a negative number is to the left or the right of the zero and simply ask the question, how far away is it? Not worrying about direction, just how many units. If you have that solid, well, I'll tell you what, let's do one more thing and see if we can make sure we have this right. Suppose we have the absolute value of negative five. Think for a minute about what you think that is, and then I will say, it's the distance between negative five and zero on the number line, count the units, and I think if you can imagine the number line, you'll see that that's five. Hope that makes sense. So what happens when we have an equation that involves absolute value? So I've got a variable x in here. Solve the equation absolute value of x is equal to five. So if we focus on the fact that the absolute value of x represents the distance between x, whatever that is in zero, we're really asking the question, where are the points on the number line whose distance from zero is five? Where are the points on the number line whose distance from zero is five? Let's imagine that. Let's draw a number line and try to figure out where are the numbers whose distance from zero is five. Oh, I think negative one would come next, wouldn't it? There we go. I did not make this long enough, so let's prepare this a little. The numbers whose distance from zero is five. Well, five would be one of those numbers. The distance between zero and five is certainly five units. But negative five is two. Negative five is also at a distance of five units between zero and that number, one, two, three, four, five. So there are two solutions to this equation, negative five and positive five. My solution set would look like this. Now, I hope that makes sense. And if you think about it, is the absolute value of five, five? Yes. Is the absolute value of negative five, five? Yes. Don't let the next equation intimidate you very much. The fact that there's something more complicated inside the absolute value bars is not significantly going to change things. It's, we're looking at the distance 
between whatever may be between the absolute value bars uh, and zero. What is that distance? If it helps you try this, let's substitute in the name of my cat, Samson. And I want to describe this scenario. Suppose zero represents my house. And there are houses to the right of me and houses to the left of me. And the absolute value of Samson would tell me how many houses away he is from my house at the moment. At this very moment, he's outside playing somewhere. And I'm wondering if the absolute value of Samson is three, that's really saying the, where is he if the distance between him and my house at the moment is three houses. He's three houses away, where could he be? Well, he could be three houses to my right. Or he could be three houses to my left. Either way, his distance to my house would be three, three houses. So Samson is either at negative three or at positive three. Three to the right or three to the left. No matter what you may have in those absolute value bars, it's just like Samson. It's either going to be three units to your right or three units to the left. Either way, you're three units away. So this equation can be rewritten as two equations, and I need to move Samson out of the way to give myself some room here. Either that expression inside the absolute value bars is three units to the right, or it's three units to the left. The quantity in the absolute value bars is either at three or at negative three. Negative three. And that gives you two equations to solve. And we'll do them very quickly. Now we solve for t as if these were just ordinary linear equations because that's, that's what they are. In the one on the left, if I add three to both sides, I'll get two t equals zero. No, I won't, I'll get two t equals six. Can't think. 2t equals 6. And dividing both sides by 2, I would get t equal 3. Add 3 to both sides. 3 plus 3 is 6. Divide by 2 gives me 3. Now, in this one, add 3 to both sides. This is where I was thinking, I believe. Add 3 to both sides. Negative 3 plus 3. 2t is going to equal 0. And divide both sides by 2, and you'll get 0. There are once again two solutions. Think about Samson and how far away, away he is from the house. That'll help. Let's try another one. This next one is really, you might think it's an attempt to trick you. It's really not. I'm only going to say this. If we have an equation where there's more than an absolute value on one side, let's just isolate that absolute value first. So I've got 5x minus 3 in absolute value minus 2. We'll add 2 to both sides of the equation. And that will give me the absolute value of 5x minus 3 is equal to 10. So where is Samson if he's 10 houses away from my house? He's either 10 to the right or he's 10 to the left. So 5x minus 3 is either negative 10, 10 to the left, or 5x minus 3 is equal to positive 10, 10 to the right. Hope that makes sense. Now, each one of those then, once you've figured that out, is simply a linear equation, and you just solve them as usual. Uh, add 3 to both sides of both of them, actually, but if you do that to the one on the left, you get 5x equal negative 7. Divide both sides by 5 gives you x equal negative 7 fifths. The other one, add 3 to both sides, gives you 5x equal 13. Divide both sides by 5, x is equal to 13 fifths. And my solution set contains negative 7 fifths and 13 fifths. Now, the next equation looks like it's a little bit more difficult because there are two absolute value bars involved. 
Again, we're going to think about distance, and if I can talk about uh, my cat analogy again, let me introduce you to another cat. So there's Samson, who we've already met, and there's another cat in the neighborhood whose name is Timothy. So for the time being, forget about what the complicated stuff might be between the absolute value bars and just think about the cats. If absolute value, if absolute value means distance from zero, zero meaning my house, um, then what this is asking is where are Samson and Timothy if they're both the same distance from my house? So imagine a number line and zero represents my house. I want the distance between Samson and my house and the distance between Timothy and my house to be the same. So I want them to be the same distance away from my house. How can that happen? Well, one way that could happen is if they are in exactly the same spot next to each other. Then they are certainly the same distance from my house. That would happen if the two quantities were exactly equal. Going back to the more mathematical example, that would be saying that the two expressions in absolute values are equal. But there's another way this could happen. They could be on opposite sides. So it could be the case that Samson is to the right of my house and Timothy is to the left of my house, but the same distance away. Oh, that's not really such a great picture. Let's uh, move them to where they really look like they're the same distance away. Uh, let's, I think Timothy belongs right about, let's see, is that about better? Yeah, now they look that they're the same distance away, pretty much. So one would be to the right, which is positive, and one would be to the left, which is negative. Mathematically, we could write that like this. One of them is on the opposite side of the other. Putting a negative in front of one side or the other will indicate that the two quantities are on opposite sides rather than on the same side. I'm going to address this a little bit more in a minute, but let's solve these two equations now that we've got that understood. Hope that makes sense. Either they are in the same place, so the quantities are equal, or they're on opposite sides, so one is the negative of the other. Let's solve these. 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 4. Just making sure I got it right. Yes. And the other equation would be 4x minus 3 equals negative 2x plus 4, the entire quantity. Let's solve them separately, and we'll look at the answers. So on the left, we now have variables on both sides of the equation. That's no good. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to subtract 2x from both sides. And that would mean the two x's would add to 0 on the right. On the left, you could combine like terms. 2x minus 3 is equal to 4. And then add 3 to both sides, so 2x is equal to 7. And then finally, x is equal to 7 halves. And that would be one solution. On the other side, with that negative, we would want to distribute the negative across the parentheses to change both signs. That would give me 4x minus 3 equals negative 2x minus 4. Again, we need to add 2x to both sides, so 4x minus 3 plus 2x equals negative 2x minus 4 plus 2x. The 2x's will add to 0 on the right. On the left, combining like terms, we'd have 6x minus 3 equals negative 4. Add 3 to both sides. 2x is equal to negative 1, 6x is equal to negative 1, and divide by 6. And so the solution set consists of 7 halves and negative 1 6. Now we're done. We're absolutely done. What I wanted to ask is whether when you thought about the Timothy and the Samson being on opposite sides, whether you thought, okay, um, so 
either the left side is the negative of the right side, do we also need to look at the negative of the left side being equal to the right side? So in other words, do I really need to look at another case? I'll do this down here in a little cloud in green. Do I need to think about the situation negative 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 4? That kind of reverses which side of the house Samson and Timothy are on. The fact of the matter is that we do not need to consider that as a separate case. Because here's what you could do. If you took this equation and multiplied both sides by negative 1, negative 1 on the right, negative 1 on the left. On the left, negative 1 times the negative would switch that back to a positive, and you'd be back to 4x minus 3. And on the right, the negative 1 multiplied by the 2x minus 4 could be thought of as simply having a negative up front. So the fact of the matter is that that equation is equivalent to that one, and you don't have to consider it. You just want a negative on one side or the other, and that will get you your two solutions. So I hope that will help, and if absolute value equations ever confuse you, think about my cat and think about my house, and I think that'll help.